happens while I, my older brother, and older sister are in grade school in Canton, Ohio, in a public school called Edgefield. To place it in time, um, it would be accurate to say that the civil rights movement is in full swing, so it was a while back. Um, it begins when I come home from school. Uh, in a day I'm frustrated and I approach my mom and sheepishly ask her to no longer put uh, Middle Eastern food in my lunch. And my father and her become quiet. He drops his crossword puzzle. They lock eyes. And my mother, through questioning, gets me to reveal that the other students um, give me a very difficult time and I experience a lot of condescension when I pull out food that doesn't look like everybody else's. So I asked my mom, from now on, could we do peanut butter and jelly on Wonder Bread and an apple? And uh, kind of turn down the volume on this. And then my brother and sister pipe in and say they'd like the same because they were going through it as well. I must tell you that Canton, Ohio is not the same as the Canton, Ohio that I went to grade school in. It's far more diverse. It's progressed a lot. Um, but at the time I went to school, there were no African Americans in my school. There were no Asians. I don't think there was anybody from India, nobody from Latin America, not as students, not as uh, teachers, not as administrators. It was primarily a homogenous Protestant Catholic community on a patchwork of some affluent families, mostly working class and some financially challenge families too. Um, in the midst of that, our family was slightly, slightly, slightly exotic. My father's family was from Syria, my mom's family from Palestine. Um, we had looks that weren't exactly conforming to what I went to school with. We had food that was different. We had holiday customs that were not the same as everybody else. Um, and in the midst of all of this, in the midst of this community that we were in, sometimes we, we, we could stick out. Um, my mother didn't say too much about this. She didn't have a lot to um, say at the time that I brought up this issue. But what I can tell you is about a week later at school, the teacher announces that we should not bring lunches the following day, nor should we bring lunch money for the cafeteria that we were going to have some sort of a special food event. And the next day, at lunch, unbeknownst to me, in comes my mother. <laughs> in comes my mother with boxes and trays of Middle Eastern food. The teacher introduces her. This is Mrs. Nyman. This is Tom's mom. And let me tell you about her. She was an artist. She dressed like an artist. She spoke like an artist. She had the attitude of an artist. And she pulls out the food. She starts serving the kids kibbe. This is a baked dish. It's a, you'll find it on the homes of kings and queens. You'll find it in the homes of the most humble people. Try this. Here, here's some fataya. These are little triangular uh, uh, bread pies and they have meat in them or they have spinach in them and they have pine nuts and onions and she pulled out the tabbouleh and she pulls out the hummus and she pulled out other things baba ganoush and her homemade bread she had baked bread for the entire class and gave them something to take home and she's being charming and she's being funny and she's riling up the students and they're laughing and I'm blowing a gasket because a week earlier <laughs> These snarky kids are making fun of everything that I'm eating, and here they are sucking down my mom's food that she made for us day after day and year after year. And she did the same thing the next day in my brother's class and the day after that in my sister's classes as well. Now, I would like to tell you that this ended some of the low-grade racial issues that my brother and sister and I faced while we were in public school. It did not, but, but 
it took a significant edge off of it, and she, if I think about it now, was a very early pioneer of diversity in a very crafty way using Middle Eastern hospitality. And when I think about how cool that was versus what her other options may have been, calling the principal up and saying, would you mind not picking on my kids? She took a different route. And I will have to say something else that just recently occurred to me that I owe a debt of gratitude to the principal, Mr. Hartley, who paddled me more than once, <laughs> and my teacher, my second grade teacher, Mrs. Wingeter, who also um, uh, had to have uh, 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 conspired to help this all happen to make, this, make, to make the meal thing for all of my student friends uh, uh, happen. Uh, the only other thing I'd like to add is this. In my own protests now, because I've become more uh, uh, active uh, with the current administration and the growing lack of tolerance for diversity, I'm taking a tip from my mom that I should make some protests with hospitality to ease the way for change. And the last thing, I don't think my mom would think of it in these terms, but I will say that you can't disparage somebody, you can't harm somebody, you can't humiliate somebody when they're sucking down your mom's food. You just can't, <laughs> you can't do it. So for that, I owe, for that lesson for me, I owe a debt of gratitude to my mom. Allah yarahum muha, may God look mercifully on her. Thank you. Tom Nyman.